Hello and welcome to South First. I am Chetna Belgiri. We all love the monsoon season for its cool breeze and refreshing rains, but it also brings some unwanted challenges. One such challenge is your skin to fungus and hair fall, fungal infections, eczema, whatnot. So this really needs extra care. To speak on all of this and to answer many of our readers' questions, we are joined by Dr. Divya Sharma, dermatologist from Dr. Divya Skin and Hair Solutions, renowned dermatologist Dr. Abhiram from Eye Skin Clinic, and Dr. Sonika from Ayana Skin Clinic in New Delhi. Welcome you all. Thank, Thank you, you Thank so you. much, Ritna. First of all, I just want to throw a general question. Maybe we could start with Dr. Divya and all of you could answer the same question. Do you agree that monsoon needs extra care for your skin and hair? And what are some of the common skin infections that you are seeing in your OPD this monsoon season? I, I would actually appreciate the effort that you have made to talk about a monsoon season specifically because this season is a very paradoxical season. So if you look at your skin on face and hair, because of monsoon, uh, we have oil glands on face and uh, scalp. So due to monsoon, you do see increased sebum secretion because monsoon also brings humidity. So you do become a little prone to breakouts or uh, uh, coming to scalp because monsoon is also one time where the you know accumulation of sweat, rain, wet hair, leads to grime on the scalp, leading to common condition known as dandruff. So I call monsoon as a dandruff season very commonly. Now, coming to skin below neck, paradoxically in monsoon, there are areas which are your folds, like your underarms and, you know, the area between your toes. Uh, very commonly, fungal infection is seen. It's an accumulation of, you know, humid weather as well as uh, the dampness in clothes. There are multiple factors which lead to uh, increased incidence of fungal infections. In my OPD per se, I do feel paradoxically, though the folds get uh, more prone for fungal infection, we do also see a worsening of eczema, which is due to dry skin. So, you know, it, monsoon is a season where you see all sorts of issues. Particularly. Yes, yes, I agree. So, Dr. Sonika, I, I, uh, you are in New Delhi. So do you see, you know, we are from the south here. So there is a big difference of weather. Uh, so what, is the, what are the kind of, uh, you know, skin conditions or uh, skin related complaints that you are seeing in your uh, clinic now? Uh, I would say uh, the season of monsoon is same for the all. Uh, in this season, particularly the rising cases, as Dr. Divya mentioned, a lot of fungal infections and uh, rising cases of eczema. And along with that excessive monsoon hair fall, we are combating. Uh, along with that, because of course, because of the you know occlusion uh, and the dampness, we are seeing a lot of sweat dermatitis as well in a lot of patients. And uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, I would okay. Say. Dr. Abhiram, uh, Dr. Abhiram, do you see more number of women coming to you? I mean, generally, in a, on a general sense, though beauty is always associated, beauty care and all those things are associated with women. But do you see more number of men coming in or women coming in with these complaints now this monsoon? So, as such, uh, we dermatologists consider monsoon and winters as a very good season for us because of a lot of influx of patients. Uh, so, like, uh, uh, cosmetic, cosmetologically, a lot, uh, lot of women comes, but did this monsoon and summer... Uh, uh, winter uh, skin care issues uh, equally both the men and women uh, come to our OPDs for their issues so both the skin and hair is at a toss so as okay. both the doctors uh, Dr. Sonika Madam and Dr. Divya Madam said so monsoons are definitely going to have a lot of toll on the skin and the hair so we have to be uh, 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 going to uh, have a lot of extra care when it comes to monsoon and uh, winter because there is a lot of humidity to start with but being in Bangalore the humidity wears off because there is going to be a par, uh, par, uh, mixture of winter and uh, monsoon. So we'll start with humidity in the initial days of the monsoon. But later on, as it goes, it becomes more of a cold uh, uh, winter season with the rains, which we go, which we're going to see in Bangalore. Okay, so now I think this is quite interesting. So, um, Dr. Abhinav, now when you're saying there's a combination of humidity as well as cold weather, which co which is going to play a role. So, what are some of the um, infections that we could expect that, you know, uh, infections or skin conditions that we know that, okay, this is going to happen now. So, you better be careful about. So, is there anything of that sort which you can expect? Uh, both, of, both of them are different spectrums. Co uh, humidity brings you a lot of sweat, dampness to the body. And there is, as Divya Madam was uh, uh, mentioning about the sebum secretion and everything going high. 
right there are few few conditions which are going to be uh, happening to, uh, with the, this uh, high humidity and as uh, uh, the cold weather also sets in in bangalore early so there is going to be a transepidermal water loss going making your skin more dry and there are going to be all this uh, winter dermatosis coming more early than the regular winter sets in okay okay so dr divya if i can come to you uh, are there any skin types which are more prone to infections during this monsoon uh, i mean chetna that's a good question because people who have a history of sneezing wheezing sinus asthma dry cough in general as we dermatologists label them as atopic they particularly are very much susceptible to what dr sonika said sweat dermatitis you know we do see a lot of patients with uh, you know itching due to um, sweating and per se in bangalore uh, dengue is very common right so insect bite reactions are also very very common in people with dry body skin so when a dermatologist says dry body skin we're not referring to the face particularly because see face can be either normal or dry or oily or combination we do have oily glands on the face so when we talk of these infections we are uh, in general the eczemas and uh, the uh, this thing is very common in people with atopy also, uh, in monsoon, people do tend down south, they tend to take bath even more, you know, mm -hmm. it, and that's also one thing that because of sweating post workout, I'm washing myself, doctor, every time I come back from outside, I'm washing my hands and feet. So that also particularly predisposes them. Add to it, viral infections are on the rise. So if you are suffering from a viral fever, there are more chances of an allergy or hives coming, uh, you know, following the viral infection. So I am actually seeing a lot of viral rash since uh, the dengue thing is more prevalent in Bangalore. Okay. So I would say dry skin people, people with, uh, um, you know, uh, we see a lot of patients who do repetitive bathing, they particularly are at more risk of eczemas. And so diabetics, you... hmm. yeah, please so diabetics. Me. Diabetics particularly because they also have a little bit depressed immunity. So, you know, too much washing of feet. So, we tell them to not wash the underside of feet. You have to keep the uh, inter, the toe clefts sweat free, humid free. Right. So, since five days a week has started in Bangalore particularly, I mean, there's no work from home anymore. So, we do see a lot of foot fungal infections in okay. diabetics especially. Okay. Uh, Dr. Sonika, you were mentioning about fungal infections on the rise and you're seeing such cases. So what are the signs and symptoms of fungal infections? Um, you know, and even there is a lot of talk about these athletes' food. So could you please explain to us on what those are? Uh, so the primary symptoms uh, for, a uh, you know, for a typical fungal infection, people complain of red, itchy, scaly patches, mostly that start from the folds. And gradually, they, you know, usually they start as a coincides lesion, which is the typical appearance of a fungal rash. And then gradually it increases in size, depending how the patient is take care, taking care of that. Uh, the size of the rash increases very fast, especially in this weather, because again, because of the dampness and uh, occlusion that is happening. And uh, yeah, that would okay. Okay. Dr. Uh, Dr. Abhiram, if, uh, you know, the wet clothes is something which is of serious concern to skin infections, especially you've seen, um, there is a lot of memes also which go around uh, on social media asking the sun god to show some mercy because it's continuously raining, your undergarments don't dry up. So how safe is it to, um, you know, uh, why is it instructed that you should not wear uh, wet clothes, especially undergarments and what are some infections it can actually bring in? Uh, before answering this question, madam, I would also uh, just uh, uh, support a statement Dr. Divya madam has uh, given. So there is a, a increase in urticaria and uh, the, um, the viral infections. Yeah, last week to 10 days, we are going to see these conditions, though they are throughout the year. But there is a high raise of this urticaria and uh, shingles, especially herpes zoster, being seen in our OPDs a lot. So uh, to, uh, I would support that statement what madam has made. So again, to co coming to your question, see, uh, Setna madam, like uh, fungus... Is a very uh, uh, clever organism. They, they they want survival, so they want an opportunity. So most of the times 
when we come to see fungal infections in people uh, across uh, economic status socio economic status is not going to be better though we are seeing more of low socio economic status people having this and rise but uh, nowadays we are seeing even the normal people have having fungal infection it's a red carpet for this fungus given by the patients themselves so they usually we in our opds we are not going to be confined just with the prescription we do a lot of counseling through uh, do's and don'ts for fungal infection especially when it comes to damp clothes and dampness damp dampness is like a heaven for fungus so they 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 it's like a good cocktail for them to stay on the body so we don't want that to give and we want to eradicate that fungus uh, that environment so uh, taking shower twice daily uh, again preferably a lukewarm water begin again they, they it can't strip the natural oils and cleaning the fold areas especially the indigenous areas very religiously and wearing dry uh, uh, i would say iron clothes because the clo the, the bangalore is uh, and i don't know the monsoons are going to not uh, uh, have some amount of moisture so i would say iron clothes and preferably comfortable cotton undergarments especially when it comes to uh, uh, men we would ask them to use some boxers which are roomy so and ask them to uh, in fact uh, avoid some undergarments at the night time because of the good room air, air flow to the uh, affected areas these are all going to play an important role for them to not come back to us again and again otherwise the treatment is going to be only uh, making the fungus static or maybe there is going to be a small amount of sidel effect that is uh, killing the fungus but definitely the residual fungus will be uh, waiting for an opportunity to pounce you on pounce on again and come back to the body again and again dr divya how can we distinguish between eczema and fungus fungus flare ups uh chetna ma'am like just dr sonika said mostly fungus loves folds as dr abiram rightly said a red carpet for fungus is moisture areas where there's occlusion so mostly fungal would come there and a fungal infection has a typical presentation of a coin which is empty from inside so you see ring shaped lesions you see you see map like areas the borders will look like maps eczema tends to be more on in adults it's more on shins i mean the front side of legs or the areas which are more washed arms in particularly so one distinction is the location other is how the lesions look eczemas can be vp and long standing eczemas can also have increased skin markings so fungus generally until patient has used a steroid that is also one big menace we all, i think we all will agree that we find an opportunity to say do not use anything with uh, uh, things like b uh, you know beclomethasone or clobetasol don't use a steroid antifungal combination during monsoons particularly that changes the look of a fungus but a typical fungus will have a map while eczema will be more either oozy crusted or it can have increased skin markings location of eczema is generally not the folds it is more of the fungal infection which prefers folds only in very very rare case, uh, patients which is not of course related to monsoon seborrheic dermatitis can present uh, eczema on the you know near the nasolabial fold or underarm but that's a rarity so for our viewers i think we just need to look at the location we should tell them that if you see a map like area anywhere please go to your nearby dermatologist and don't self treat okay i that was my next question on whether they should actually go and just buy a ointment because that's the tendency where they just go and get it from a chemist so uh, rather to be there on mute yeah right rather this uh, you know that is a very indian behavior pan india that we'll go to the doctor or we'll go to the chemist or we'll go to a friend and what gives you fast relief a combination of antifungal with a steroid now patient reads only the first part what they don't realize that there is a like for example candid b i should be naming a, a, a particular brand but these are some brands even physicians give to patients so for our viewers please make sure there is no nothing like mometasone clobetasol beclomethasone if you are self treating of course we uh, uh, detest people from doing that but suppose you are using something please don't use things like that that will as dr abiram said again it rolls out a red carpet and then you know we end up uh, treating them multiple times so don't give fungus an infect uh, uh, opportunity to spread unnecessarily because you have done self medication okay uh, dr sonika what about hair fall i mean you were also talking about hair fall right that's our quest i mean we we had asked readers to send us some questions uh, they have sent us some questions and majority of them have asked about hair fall and like dr divya said dandruff so uh, is there any prevention as such we know now the reason for hair fall but then is there any uh, anything they could do to prevent hair fall 
uh, for sure. Um, monsoon hair fall is a mini case at the moment, I would say. Uh, the two problems that people are facing, one is hair fall, another is hair breakage in this season. The primary reason would be uh, because of repetitive wetness of their hair. Usually the cuticle breaks, the hair become very fragile and uh, so there's hair breakage and more so because of the buildup in pre-sebum activity even on the scalp. They are having itchy scalp, irritated scalp and dandruff which is the primary reason for their hair fall, right? So uh, for the prevention of it, regular hair washes is a mandate so that the grime that has collected over your scalp just gets cleansed and there's the hair fall that is happening because of that buildup does not happen. Also, uh, having said that, uh, it is important to, you know, not to leave their hair wet for a long time because that is the primary reason for their hair breakage. Uh, usually, we do not advise patients to use any hair drying tools per se, but in this weather, you know, uh, we can advise them to use them on low setting so as to just, you know, uh, dry their hair faster. Otherwise, we prefer, uh, you know, normal drying of hair is more preferred, but regular cleansing, number one, and of course, diet has a very important role in, again, the monsoon hair fall as well. So keeping their diet adequate, rich in proteins, rich in minerals would go a long way. Okay. Dr. Divya, do you want to add to this? Um, I, I mean, of course, Dr. Sonika has enumerated most of the points, but uh, there's also a tendency for people to wash their scalp less, as she rightly pointed out, right? There's always a fear in patients that if I wash my scalp more often, the sulfate in the shampoo or the hard water in Bangalore or even in areas of NCR, I believe. So that causes hair fall. I mean, as she rightly said, there is it's a multifactorial process. Your nutrition is important. Your metabolism is important. Diet during monsoon cannot be bhajji uh, or what you call as, you know, you get my point. So Dr. Sonika was right that we yes. also tend to eat out more and the warm tea is like, a, as Dr. Abhiram said, red carpet for eating whatever along. So you have to make sure you have to wash your scalp Keep your skin, uh, scal uh, keeping your scalp cleaner will always add to hair health. Whichever hair has fallen out is what is apparent after a hair wash. You don't get more hair wash because of a particular shampoo, right? So make sure since water is hard and shampoo is sulfate free, you wash your scalp more often. Taking a micronutrient mineral multivitamin supplement is helpful. You also have to make sure that like in Bangalore, sun never rises during monsoon for us. Uh, it particularly can't talk about the other areas. So you must check out for a nutritional deficiency, especially vitamin D. Ten, you tend to be even more indoors during uh, the uh, uh, monsoon season. So nutrition, mm -hmm. metabolism, don't gain weight, eat well, as Dr. Sonika said, eat good, eat less calories, right? Don't order out. I don't know if I can say it on her popular channel, but this tendency of ordering food has also become a problem. I'm sure my uh, esteemed panelists would agree. This is a time when you tend to, you know, watch TV, binge eat. So one has to be Absolutely. particularly cool. Absolutely. Dr. Abhiram, uh, you know, adding to this, uh, we were all talking about how you need to wash your scalp more uh, often. Then is there any time which you would suggest, like as a doctor, you know, when we are saying that do not wash too much also, then, you know, we're, up, we're on the ha other hand saying that you should wash your scalp regularly. So how uh, is there a frequency to that? So ideally, uh, two to three times a week, because that's the ideal way to do that. Because I get to see people telling because of the fear of hair fall or baby, they give lame excuses telling, I don't have much time, I co catch up cold, telling that like they come up with uh, a lot of scaling and flaking, contradicting themselves, they don't wash. So they expect a medication or a shampoo. But see, primarily it is washing the shampoo, very, uh, washing the hair very frequently along with the scalp. So as Madam said, like sulfate-free shampoos are preferable because they can uh, take out the water or strip the natural oils from the hair and the scalp. So being gentle with the shampoos. So and also, I would add some amount of like oil application, not just more to the scalp, to the length of the hair, because especially women hair, they will be uh, not having uh, oil reaching to the tips of the hair. So just you can uh, apply oil the day before or a couple of hours before the uh, things and gently applying to the uh, uh, hair, length of the hair and then washing with the lukewarm water is preferable. 
you are saying do not apply too much of oil on the scalp but only yes. on to the hair right and yes. do you they see can... this is tendency that especially in indian population south indian population to apply oil and leave it overnight and then wash it the next morning so uh, do you have to say anything on that is that is that good it bad for the hair problem, as long as they don't uh, overload things on the scalp because see i get to see people telling that i i i, I have a have a great i have a big headache when i don't use hair oil spray more of psychological effects and lot of traditional values added to it and lot of uh, uh, psychological aspects as well so uh, it's oiling is a double edged weapon when it comes to the scalp it can trigger inflammatory conditions and flaky conditions like seborrheic dermatitis and sometimes it is useful when you use uh, uh, judiciously to the scalp because of the dry scalp you can use it as a thin layer once in a while but not overloading it is important and okay, uh, uh, not Divya... them, not keeping them for a days like without washing is because they can catch up lot of dust and debris into the scalp so that's not a good idea so washing uh, keeping it and washing uh, the day after uh, overnight and keeping the uh, washing it on the next day is good okay yeah that's that is something which is uh, again a very common question commonly asked question dr divya um, you know another uh, like kind of debatable other than the hair oil is also the use of sunscreen i mean you always associate sunscreen with summer right so uh, now this is monsoon so do you think we first of all is it necessary to wear a sunscreen and second thing is um, do you do it now in the monsoon as well right i would rather say that a uh, very good question and i think we all miss this point that in monsoons when you have clouds it blocks uvb it doesn't block uva it doesn't block visible light it doesn't block infrared from heat sources so definitely you should make a point because this is also a season ironically of sun allergies forget about the cosmetic part of the sunscreen polymorphic right. light eruptions are very common and bangalore sun is dubiously looking very nice so you know you like to go without an umbrella of taking a stroll with our uh, blossom trees but we should definitely make a point to use a sunscreen even if we are indoors and i'm sure my esteemed panelists will support during monsoon it's rather more important that yes you can always opt for a oil free or a matte sunscreen you are ask your dermatologist to give you something which doesn't give a sticky white cast which is a bigger a problem in monsoon there's another one reason why they don't put you know it's already so sweaty and humid i'm i'm sure my colleagues in across um, uh, north will agree it's even more sweaty there so then you have to change the formulation you cannot have the same food in four seasons you cannot have sometimes the same sunscreen in all the seasons so choose your formulation even more important to put it and keep your arms covered especially bangalore because uv index is higher we are at a little higher sea level we enjoy a good weather with that also comes an increased risk of sun allergies in particular okay i remember you told me sunscreen is like you know dating you need to choose yours <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely and you can change your boyfriend in that <laughs> sense definitely Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Uh, so uh, next, we're going to some of the readers' questions. I will, uh, you know, uh, probably uh, direct at the uh, speakers, and then you can take the questions. So, are there any specific, uh, Doctor Divya, if you could answer this? Are there any, um, you know, like you said, seborrheic dermatitis? Are there any other such dermatitis that actually flares up during monsoon? Uh, I think seborrheic dermatitis, that is eczema due to dandruff, and as Dr. Abiram said, make sure you use an anti-dandruff shampoo at least twice a week and keep your scalp clean. Then people who have a tendency of eczema dry cough, they particularly get more itchy when they sweat. So make sure that you don't moisturize your fold, keep your folds dry. But rest of the body, please moisturize. And when we say moisturize, we prefer emollients, coconut oil or you know, uh, a mustard oil or a olive oil is definitely more inflammatory in monsoon weather. Avoid that. If you are fond of putting oil, it has to be before bath. And place of a moisturizer which has ceramide and which has, a, you know, a combination of occlusive and ceramide is best for the other areas of the body. This particular dermatitis is more common in monsoon weather. So keep the folds dry, keep rest of the body moisturized, avoid putting too much oil on hair as well as body. Okay, thank you very much. Dr. Abhiram, if you could, uh, you know, tell us, uh, there's a question saying, how many times can we wash our face during monsoon? Uh, <clears throat> I, I, because like uh, there is a bit of a humidity and there is a rise of uh, uh, oil secretion. So definitely two to three times with a gentle cleanser is definitely good. 
Okay, okay. And uh, this is before, is there any skin routine that can follow, that can, that they can follow through the day? Is there anything of that sort which you could suggest? As ma'am said, like uh, having a good uh, lukewarm water shower for both the uh, body and uh, uh, hair, uh, use a good moisturizer or emollient, add them to a good sunscreen uh, to the exposed areas. So that would be good. Okay, okay. Uh, Dr. Sonika, there's a question on, uh, is makeup going to damage skin during monsoon? Uh, makeup for sure. Uh, I would say already due to increase activity on your face, your pores are more clogged in this weather, right? Just overloading your face with more of makeup will clog the pores more and will uh, prone you to more breakouts, more acne. So please avoid as much of ma makeup as possible. Avoid layering of makeup. Keep it minimal and wash it, especially before sleeping. Okay. Uh, Dr. Divya, um, uh, are, are, would you be okay? With, I mean, there's, the question is, uh, what about home remedies for skin hair care? Home remedies have been there for long, but our environment and outer conditions have changed possibly too drastically for us to, you know, adopt and adapt. So, for example, I'm uh, when it comes to things like avoid things like aloe vera, facial oil, oil cleansers, especially when you put, put makeup, most of the makeup cleansers sometimes have double cleansing, you know, avoid all that. Uh, home remedies, particularly, we are not very fond of. As I tell, told in the beginning, skin below neck is dry, face is a uh, combination to oily in most of the people. Things like aloe vera and all can trigger reactions. Uh, putting oil in the northern part of your body is never a good idea. Putting too much oil is something that you should be avoiding in, in general. So monsoon is a season of less home remedies, actually. And though, as Dr. Abiram said, we are traditional people, we like to put oil because it gives me a headache. We are so untraditional when it comes to our bathing practices. So one should be very, very traditional in bathing practices. If I remember our parents and grandparents completing their bath in half bucket because there were no storage tanks of water. So those things at home you should do. But it's a, it's a season of no home remedies, actually. Okay, that's a good one. Uh, we will quickly wrap up. We just have about five minutes more. So um, if you could just give uh, five tips, what would it be, Dr. Divya? We'll start from Dr. Divya and then we'll continue. Five tips for monsoon. One, keep your scalp clean. Wash your scalp regularly. Oil your hair, but wash your scalp. Number two, moisturize your body well. Number three, keep your folds dry. Uh, do not try to overwash your body. Sweat is a natural secretion. Soap and water is not natural to the to your skin. Fourth, do not eat bajji bondas. Make sure that you eat nutritious food. Fifth, do make sure that you exercise. Don't fear sweat. Sweat helps your skin and hair in every possible sense. Dr. Abira, leaving these things, if you could give us five tips. Uh, rise because dampness is important like keep your hair body folds very dry and uh, even including uh, wear some comfortable clothes uh, which is not very occlusive even when it comes to dermatophytic infections of the feet and the nails very common because of the water logging onto the shoes and like you immerse your feet into the rainy uh, 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 puddles and all those things so keeping it dry and wear a footwear which is open than the closed ones okay dr sonika you want to add some tips to this uh, I would say try to change your skincare routine according to the weather. Uh, you know, jo just uh, as ma'am said, uh, that like you cannot eat all the same food for all the season. So just switch to maybe for a, I would say for an acne oily prone skin, use a exfoliating salicylic based uh, face washes and serums maybe twice a week and switch to gel, ba uh, gel based uh, moisturizer instead of a cream based moisturizer. Thank you very much, all of you. I think it was wonderful speaking to you. These There are lots and lots of questions. Uh, I hope we could take up another session soon on this, maybe, because just to answer the questions. Thank you very much. It was wonderful speaking to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Chetna, for giving us this opportunity. Thank you so much, Chetna. Thank you, Doctor.